Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, coming to you live from my Seattle apartment, of course. High rise. You've seen it if you watch my videos on Skype, and I don't know why you wouldn't have. Maybe you've had the corona the last little while, but uh, by the way, your, your, uh, we got the Pearlocopters going now, so all of your Pearls of Wisdom necklaces are on in the Pearlocopter, and Hernandez and Melissa are busy going all around the land bringing them to you. So don't need to send me any more letters, although you, I do love your letters. Send letters all the time. One of the letters that we got, actually, we got several. I couldn't even tell you all the people that bought this letter. They're all flutter. People are all a flutter about the Chicago Blackhawks, and uh, they sent a letter. They sent their own little letter, didn't they? They sent their letter to the land, and uh, they said, uh, "Yeah, we're going to do a bit of a rebuild." Yeah, just thought I'd let you know. Just thought if you hadn't figured it out already, I don't know how anybody hadn't figured it out. I mean, maybe some people that you know, your average fan. But we're looking at. Uh, uh, we're going to be talking about this, anyways, about this rebuild and what may happen and all of that. Mark Lazarus from the Chicago Sun-Times, he wrote a piece on it, and I've read lots of pieces. I just decided I'd give some props to Mark Lazarus here. Uh, and uh, he wrote a piece about, if we're going to do that, then probably Kane should be taken off, because now the Chicago Blackhawks came out with a thing saying that that they're going to try to keep their core together. I'm going to put emphasis on the word try there, because if we're going to do a rebuild, as they're saying, and if we remember, the reason why this whole thing happened was Jonathan Taze came out after they traded Crawford and Saad back for a, pro, a draft pick and uh you know, a young Zadaroff, a fairly young Zadaroff, who probably isn't going to be even, you know, isn't going to make most teams top four. And all of that, he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody told me anything about a rebuild. And uh, I was like, dude, you gotta, like, maybe fire your agent. If you didn't see the writing on the wall here, <laughs> you you are 31 years old and on a decline and having declining years in point production every single year uh, as we can see uh, barring last year sorry did I did I hit Kane or Taze there that was I hit Kane didn't I yes I didn't mean to do that let me go back here sorry that scared me there for a second it was Taze we're looking for we will look at Kane's numbers in a second but 60 points, 81, 52. They have one, he had a really good year in 2018, 19, but besides that, it's 58, 58. You got the 81, everybody thought, Taze is back. Nope. Chicago, 60 points in 70 games. Not horrible for a lot of things that Taze does for a team. Um, 10 and a half million is probably over the money now, but he, don't get me wrong, he totally deserves the contract that he has. But the fact of the matter is, he's not getting any younger. And his points are declining. Uh, Jonathan Taves now, on the other hand, is an absolute beast. And he's still running at over a point a game at 31 years old. Besides last year, he got 60 points. He had a down year too. But for the most part, his whole career, that's Taves. Why did that happen? Okay, this is cap friendly. It's the best there. I said it. But it's kind of ticking me off right now. Patrick Kane. Kane. There we go, Patrick Kane. Okay, there, see, over a point a game. I was right, 110 points in 81 games. Like, woo, 31 years old, doesn't look like he's slowing down all that much. Uh, but besides that, you have Keith, whose numbers are definitely declining. He's 37 years old. It's uh, not much, not, not really all that much cap space, but they have been slowly bringing in Dominic Kubelik, uh, David Kampf, uh, of course, Kirby Dock, Michael Nylander, who they traded for Yoki Haru, 
Uh, when they brought in Dylan Strom, they sort of gave an older guy away for that in Schultz, Sch uh, Sch Schmaltz, I should say. Um, yeah, they were bringing in some younger guys, Taver, Taveser, already. They were sort of sneaking it under the uh, radar there with you, wasn't it, weren't they? And then all of a sudden it smacked them in the head and went, oh, we're rebuilding. And it freaked them out. So they put this thing out to the to the to the land and said, "Okay, uh, they use the word rebuild in it." Now I think they they're saying they want to keep the core, but and they could, I suppose. But if you're going to do a rebuild, do a bloody rebuild. I mean, Kane's going to be 33 at the end of his 10 and a half million dollar contract. Is Chicago going to be in a position that when Taves, Kane, and Keith are at the end of their contracts? that they have an appropriate rebuild? I would say absolutely not. If it's time to rebuild, it's probably now. No use waiting till the end. Uh, basically, they said they just want to be more competitive. In other words, they don't believe that the team they have now and what can be added out of their junior ranks puts them in a position to be cup contenders. And that was a hard pill to swallow for Jonathan Taves, I imagine. But that being said, Mark Lazarus talks about the, in the Chicago Times talks about the prospect that Kane could be traded, and that and I've heard that from more than just him. The Kane could be traded now. If he's going to be traded, I imagine they will wait until the trade deadline to do something like that. Maybe even next year, but I would say the trade deadline would be the best time, and here's why. It's a flat cap world. He's making ten and a half million dollars. Kane is probably top seven player in the league at least. I'm gonna. I'm being conservative there. I think I absolutely love Kane. He's unbelievable, and there'll be a long lineup of people looking for him, even in a cap strapped world. But if you do it at the trade deadline, a lot of teams won't be cap strapped this year because they've paid out a lot of the salaries already. So remember that. I think that's likely when it will happen. But since there's going to be so many teams, I've decided to do a little series where I'm going to do four teams each time, maybe five sometimes, on each team and whom, what they would offer and what's the possibilities of Kane going there. Because I do believe that every team will be calling if Kane is definitely available. I'm gonna, so we're starting out with LMMP QRS TV W right W X Y Z. There's no X's Y's and Z's. So Winnipeg Chats. I'm doing it in reverse order. And uh, by the way, I just did a video with uh, John from Off the Wall Hockey and Joe, Joe, uh, Joe, Professor Joe, the fellow that follows me on Patreon. If you like making lots of money. Go on to the Patreon app there. Look for BPAL Picks. Over there, we make lots of money, and there's much frolic for the land. You'll love it. Go check it out. It's like $3 for, for your a month for much frolic. Just start. There's a couple other packages there. Check them out. BPAL, uh, Professor Joe is part of that. We just did a Buffalo Sabres, what they're going to do uh, and what they did do so far this summer, what they're going to do, and all of those sort of things like that, which is a series I'm doing, and I started from A and went up, going up to Winnipeg. So in this one, I decided, so all the other fans in the land don't feel left out, I started the other way around. I'm going from Winnipeg down. So Winnipeg. If Winnipeg were to make an offer here and call, and I bet you they would, I think every team would. Of course, the difficulty is he's in the West. I think they more likely would like to trade Kane to the East if they were going to do something like this, but you never know. And a team in the West would likely have to, especially a team that plays in their division, would have to offer a little more to get the likes of Kane. The first name that would come to mind would be Patrick Liney. And by the way, I didn't mention this, but Chicago has, we should always look at cap room, 5 million this year, 19 million with some guys that they don't have to sign. They'd have to sign Zadaroff, which would be cheaper. Uh, don't have to sign Zach Smith, maybe Ann Mark, but it wouldn't be much more money. So they, you know, they got a lot of cap room coming up. Where are they getting all that cap room, by the way? 
Oh, Brent Seabrook will be on injured reserve. So they've got actually a fair amount of cap room. So they can take some some co some contract back. They can take some money back. And that's huge. They can get more if they can take money back in a cap-strapped world. The first name is going to be Patrick Laine, right? Patrick Laine, Winnipeg Jets, will be offering Patrick Laine. Uh, I think if Chicago's defense is where they need the help the most. Uh, they just picked Zadaroff up, and he may play in their top four, and that's not something you want, really. <laughs> so it tells you the, uh, the, the thinness of their D-line. They do have some young players coming up. Mitchell and Bo Boilu, I believe, is his name. Uh, I'd have to, I'll have to look it up, but uh, but they're not going to be ready probably for a little bit to play a regular role, and uh, that's basically it. So, um, Boudouin is his name. There we go, Boudouin. Uh, both of them look like they're going to be good, but it's going to take them a while, and there's not much else to fill the cupboard. So they would probably be looking for at least a Sammy Niku. Maybe even a first overall pick, although I think Winnipeg would bulk at that. They'd want to send Lion A, and that's it. And if they thought about it, Chicago may think about it and go, okay, we're getting rid of a 31 player, 31 year old player, and we're getting back a winger who can play right and left wing uh, for Kane. They can fill a role and score possibly 40 goals. I think they would think about it quite a bit, even straight across. For Patrick Lyon. I don't think the odds are great that this is where he would go because we also have another problem. Kane would have to waive his no movement clause. Do you think he would waive for Winnipeg? Um, I don't think it's very likely, but I'm putting it all out there anyways because I don't know who he'll waive for. He may waive for nobody and say, I want to stay. I find that very highly unlikely that Kane would not waive in this situation. Um, they put enough pressure on him. They said they were going to rebuild. I don't think he's going to stick around there at 31 years old for a possible rebuild that could be, by the time he's 35, 35, 30, 36, he's going to leave. Now, he could. He could say, I'll take a lesser deal. I want to stay in Chicago, all of that. But that's not fun. It's not fun, right? Fun is seeing where he may go, which we're going to keep on doing. The Washington Capitals. Well, first of all, would they be interested? Yeah, absolutely. Do they have cap space? No, not at all. They're over the limit as it is right now. However, next year, well, sort of comes off the books. They got to sign Ovechkin. They have $16 million in cap space and they have to sign Ovechkin. Now, Ovechkin has been very good for his contracts. And he's talked about, like, him working around it for them to win another cup and that he may take a lot less. Well, he would have to. He would have to. Uh, he would have to take somewhere in the $5 million mark for them to even have a chance. Then they would probably put Jacob Verana in this deal so they wouldn't have to re-sign him again. And then there's the problem of Washington's defense and who they may offer there. Uh, Jonas Siegenthaler, first round picks. Uh, uh, there's a guy that I should mention here if I can find him. I think if we look at their uh, depth chart, I'm going to go up to their depth chart. Oops. Go up to their depth charts to Perlo. There we go. Hello, there we go. We go up to the depth chart and we go down here and we will see prospect Connor McMichael who put up just silly points last year. 102 points in 52 games as a 19-year-old, I want to say. 19-year-old, 18-year-old. He was a first he was a first round pick. Huge points. Not a small, too small of a guy from Ajax, Ontario. They could throw him in there uh, and they would give a lot because their window is closing and they are not really worried about the future all that much. They want to win now. If all that were to happen, and I think that's very difficult and asking a lot. And Kane says, I'd like to go to Washington, which I think is a possibility when you consider this lineup. Kane, Kuznetsov, and Ovechkin. 
Yeah, that would be insane. Kane, Ovechkin, and Kuznetsov. Crazy line. Crazy line. You win a cup just with that line. Now, Verana would be gone, and they'd have to put Haglin up here. Wilson come down to the third line. They could work something out, but who cares? You got Kane, Kuznetsov, and Ovechkin. That would be nuts. Not saying it's going to happen, but... I um, bet you that they would give it the best shot they could. So now let's go to the funniest one, the Vegas Golden Knights. And you're going to say, no, no, no cap space, impossible, blah, 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 blah. Has that ever stopped Vegas before? Do they ever bother with things like cap space or future prospects or possibility of this team completely caving in in four to five years and going through the rebuild of all rebuilds where it takes like 10 years? No, never did bother them before. So uh, do you think it off, offer Alex Tuck? Uh, and uh, they would still need to do something with their cap. They could trade away Riley Smith to someone, and I bet you they could find some value for that. Then all of a sudden, they've got enough room for Kane. Uh, now, of course, they have did that, and they've given up their first for sure. Their first is gone. Bye-bye. Uh, whatever defenseman they have, they have Peyton Krebs they could throw in there, or was like crazy in the mind. I think he, was, he, he did very well in junior last year, I believe. 60 points in 38 games, almost two points a game. Yeah, he's that. that's a good one. We'll take that. And uh, Nicholas Hag, they could offer a huge package for Kane. And uh, I wouldn't doubt if they did, to tell you the honest truth. I wouldn't pit Vegas off the board here. If you look at their what they would have after that, you would have a line of Pacioretty, uh, Carlson and Stone, and then you could have you could put Stone down here, you could put Kane there, that'd be killer. Uh, this says Chandler Stevenson, but it would more than likely Cody Glass is gonna be ready next year. He's a young first over or sorry, first round pick that was injured last year, apparently is perfectly healthy now. So you could put Kane or here, remove Riley Smith because we traded him away with Marsha show and and you got uh, one unbelievable second line you can score for days solid defense they're a cup contender just like that so I wouldn't put it past them I I wouldn't put it past them at all now the Vancouver Canucks I would say this is the least likely of the bunch they have to find a way to get Louis Erickson off the books apparently Mike Hoffman by the way on a side note is waiting for them to do that before he makes any decision they want him they'll take him as soon as they can get rid of Louis Erickson. I don't know how they're going to do that. They may be calling a hitman. <laughs> All of a sudden, Louis Erickson is gone and nobody can find him. <laughs> that might be the only way they're going to get rid of that contract. But that being said, and I think if they were going to go after Kane, which, I mean, I'm sure they'd be on the phone because you look at this. Imagine this man here, Elias Peterson, with... Kane? Are you kidding me? That would be just stupid, man. This guy will be putting up 100 points probably as close to next year. Elias Peterson is unbelievable. In style-wise, he's the closest thing to Gretzky that I've seen. So you'd have JT Miller, Elias Peterson, and maybe you got to give up Brock Nelson to get Kane. If you do, well, you question that. I think that if you offered Brock Nelson to Chicago... At the trade deadline, they may take it right there, just like that. Brock Besser is a 30-goal scorer already at 23 years old. Who knows what his offensive upside. For him to play with a guy like Kirby Dock would be amazing. He's solid. He's physical. He plays both ways well. He's got an incredible shot. That may just do it for Kane alone right there. So, yes, they would be interested. And halfway through the year, they may not have to get rid of Louis Erickson, and they can finally buy him out next year. Um, otherwise, I don't know even know why they have Louis Erickson in here. I, I can't see him even being in the lineup. But put Kane here with Horvat and Pearson or whatever you want to do. That is one incredible offensive team right there if they pick up Kane. Um, again, we look at these. I'm not saying all of these are... Um, teams that are definitely going to get them. But all of them, I, I believe, would give up a lot 
to get Cain. And as we go through these, we're going to do the rest. You can tell me, but tell me now, which one of these teams do you think is most likely to get Cain? Which one would you think would be best to get Cain for you? And which one would be the most fun? Would you like to see that Ovechkin line? Would you like to see the Vegas Golden Knights have like all of that talent and finally win a cup, like like win a cup as an expansion team? Or Vancouver Canucks? Tell me who there may be. And we're going to go through the rest of the teams next time. Not the rest of the teams. Another four teams starting from W and I don't know. So who are they going to be? Toronto, I think. And uh, I, I'm not good off the top of my head like this. But Toronto, New York, maybe something like that. Should be fun, though. Thanks for listening and subscribing and hitting the bell and all of that sort of stuff like that. Head over to the steelflyers.com website. It is going to be incredible. Give it a view. Yeah, we're going to be improving that website excrementally. It is going to be insane. All sports, all day, done by different writers. And also a live feed going through it that you can watch, listen to all your teams and everything. It's going to be fantastic. Um, have a great day, everybody. That's my full 42. I forgot that. That's my full 42. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.